Hey, I'm Polygon, and in this video, we're looking into eight art mistakes that you won't see coming. And stay tuned until the end because I've got a special recommendation that will help you with all eight of these mistakes that's absolutely free. Number one, not asking yourself, who is this for? How many times have you started a sketch or a study only to get halfway through it and realize that, hey, it's actually going pretty well? and you might be able to turn the work that you're creating into a social media post. That seems like a really nice double dip. You're doing a self-study, growing as an artist, but you're also being able to chase that cloud a little. It sounds like a win-win, but to tell the truth from experience, this is a bad way to treat your artwork. You need to be splitting your artwork into three main categories before you even start. Asking yourself, who is this for? Is it for yourself? Is it for a client? Or is it for social media? If you go into a project early on with this idea that, yes, this is for myself, but if it goes well, it could be a social media post. In the future, when you go to start these projects that are maybe self-study, you're always going to have that scratching at the back of your brain. So if things aren't going well, this can be really destructive to your process and your mental health. So this is why I strongly encourage you to go in knowing exactly who you're creating for. So if you're going to make an artwork for a social media post, just go in with that intention from the beginning. If you're going to make something for yourself, do it from the start. So don't erode your confidence and go in with intention. Number two, not knowing your why. For me personally, my why is very simple. I love creating artwork and I specifically love the process of creating artwork. So many times I get asked, what's your favorite artwork? What is your favorite piece that you've ever created? And my answer is always the same. It is the one that I am working on right now. And the reason for that is my why. The reason why I create art is because I love the process. If you do not know your why, whether you are just starting or you are years into your art career, ask yourself why. Why do you create art? Is it to eventually get a job? Is it for money? Is it for the joy of that finished piece? Do you want something that you can hang on your wall? Do you wanna be able to create gifts for other people? Whatever your why is, it doesn't matter. Make sure you have a clear understanding of what it is. Number three, burnout. The dreaded burnout, right? It comes for all of us. Whether you have experienced this or not, I have some bad news for you. It does come for us all in the end. Now I've experienced burnout many times and I've had many of my students experience burnout many times as well. So I have two really good tips here for you to get out of burnout. Number one, take a break. The worst thing you can do for burnout is try to push through because it doesn't solve the underlying issue. You can absolutely push through. I have done this in the past. The reason why it's bad is it's always going to come back time and time again because that underlying problem or the reason why you're experiencing burnout is not getting resolved. So number one, take a break and then reassess. There is something that has changed in your life or something that is affecting your art that is causing you to experience burnout. So what I recommend is take that break and take the time that you would normally use to create your artwork and use that time to reassess what's changed and what's going wrong. If you do those two things, I promise you'll be able to get through burnout and actually solve the underlying reason for why you're experiencing that. As a side note, a thing that can really help you with this is having a consistent art habit. Having either a specific time of day that you always do art makes it really easy for when you are experiencing burnout to have that time and be able to allot it to reassessing your life and finding out what's going on. If you wanna learn more about art habits, you can check out my guidebook at the link below in the description. All right, number four, micro comparisons. I'm sure that you have heard comparison is the thief of joy and you would be right. And maybe you're really good at not comparing yourself to others, especially others who have a lot more experience than you. Uh, which is a terrible thing, obviously, to do. You don't want to be comparing yourself to someone who is so much better than you. But what I want to talk about specifically here is micro comparisons. This is when you're scrolling on social media past amazing artwork after amazing artwork, and we're only looking at them for a few seconds. And it might not happen today, it might not happen tomorrow, but years down the road when we're sitting there creating artwork, we might start to question ourselves and ask things like, hey, does it really take these people only an hour to do that kind of a 
amazing artwork that I've seen? Why can't I do it that quickly? I've seen all these amazing artworks today and I just really can't create anything right now. If you've ever said these things to yourself, it is because of micro comparisons, specifically on social media. The great thing about this one is that just being aware that it's happening to you will already be a huge step in the right direction. Number five, not looking beyond the feedback. I have seen good feedback, I have seen bad feedback, I have given tons of critiques on many different students, hundreds of different students, and I have seen everything you can imagine. I've seen people take feedback well, and I've seen people ignore feedback altogether. If you have received what you would consider to be poor feedback, I want you to understand that that is actually pretty common, and you can look beyond that feedback. Typically when people give feedback, they are pointing out something that they believe to be incorrect about your artwork or something that could be improved. And typically what they'll do is they'll give a piece of advice or maybe a potential solution for you to implement into your artwork. This is when you need to look beyond the feedback that they are giving and try to break down what the actual issue could be. To give a really basic example of this, if you're drawing a person's face and they say, hey, your eyes look a little too small. Well, maybe it's not that your eyes are not too small. Maybe all of your other facial features are too large. So if you were to take their advice and make your eyes larger, well then everything on the face would look too big. But if you would look beyond the feedback and understand that, hey, there's something going on here that's incorrect about my eyes. What's going on here? Let's reassess and try to figure out a solution. So listen to their feedback, accept it. It might not be exactly correct, but if you look beyond it and you take the time to actually assess what you could do to improve your artwork, you are going to be in a much better place than if you just took it at face value. Number six, getting stuck. How many of you have ever had same face syndrome? I've been there a few times where I'll be in the middle of sculpting a face or I'll be drawing and I'll start to realize that I am once again creating the exact same face that I just did last week. Luckily, I have a super easy to implement solution that I have found incredibly helpful. So whenever I get into a place where I feel like I am stuck, maybe I'm experiencing same face syndrome, or I just can't come up with any new ideas, I recommend getting outside of your comfort zone and exploring new things. For me, I've been getting really into drawing and painting over the past couple years, and even in that, I've actually gotten stuck a few times myself. I've been working on portraits a lot lately, and to get out of that little rut that I've got myself into, I've started shifting gears and playing around with painting animals, and I have found that incredibly helpful for my mental health and artistic growth. I'm able to take ideas that I wouldn't have ever realized while painting a portrait that I'm able to find and explore while painting something completely new that I've never done before. So get outside of your comfort zone, try new things, whether that be a new medium or a new subject matter, and I promise that will help invigorate you and push your art to new heights that you wouldn't experience without getting out of your comfort zone. Number seven, unhealthy habits. If I could go back in time and give my younger self one piece of advice, it would actually have nothing to do with art whatsoever. I would tell myself to get out of my chair and stop sitting down so much. As artists, we're often tied to a desk or in a seated position for long hours throughout the day. Having a regular workout schedule, whatever that is, it can be something incredibly simple, but just getting up and moving is going to be great, obviously for your physical health, but it's also gonna be great for your mental health and your art career as a whole. I have unfortunately seen way too many of my friends that are in the art community have issues with their health directly related to art. So if you are watching this and you are someone that creates art regularly and sits down for long periods throughout the day, please get up, please go work out. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. It could be going for a walk. It could be just doing some stretching. Just like art, you can start small and work your way up, but I promise this one pays dividends. And number eight, isolation. This is one that I could have absolutely never seen coming. 
When I started art, it was all about the joy of creating and I loved having that final piece that I created that I could call my own. It was so fun and enjoyable. And to this day, I still feel all of those things, but I could have never expected how isolating and lonely art can be. If you are someone that is experiencing that, I highly encourage you to find an art community for yourself. Whether that be on your social media of choice, Discord, here on YouTube, in real life, wherever that might be, I recommend you find a community. Along with that, just a couple tips here, I definitely recommend finding a wide array of skill levels in your art community if possible. So don't have everybody be way better or way worse or exactly the same as you. Try to get a mixed bag of people if you possibly can. So people that are much better than you that can give advice because they've been where you are, people that are where you are, roughly speaking, that can go on that journey with you, and people that are not as experienced as you that you can help by giving back to your community. Art communities are awesome places for you to grow and share your journey. And if you are looking for an amazing community to join, I encourage you to check out Drawbly. This is my second channel where my wife and I draw together. I promise you will absolutely love it. I'll have a link for it down below in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also really enjoy this one where I show you how to color your 3D sculpts in three simple steps. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.